to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of A Well-Designed Business. It's Power Talk Friday. And I have a really terrific guest for you today. Her name is Ashley Uhl. And she is the principal, the founder of Ashley Uhl Consulting. And Ashley, what she does is she helps interior designers just like you learn to deliver a high-end service experience. And this, if you do this right, this leads to greater profit. It leads to more efficiency in your interior design firm. And the big, big, big thing, it leads to client loyalty. I know this for a fact at Window Works for many, many years of working in our business. And as a team, we're constantly talking about how can we make the process better for our clients and make the experience better for our clients. Because when I know for me, when I go into a repeat client's home. And I say something to them that to the effect of, you know, why did you call us again? What, what, what is it about it? They never say because your drapes are amazing. They just don't. My drapes are amazing, by the way, everybody. But they don't say that. They don't say, oh, I really love the quality of your Hunter Douglas window treatments. They don't. What they always say is, I love working with your company because... And for window works, that because is often followed by because I love that your installer bill is so good and so neat and so particular and it's just a great person. Or I love that when I call your company, I always get a live body. Or I love that Adriana is so helpful and so sunshiny because that's exactly what Adriana is. And so these are the things that up-level our business and create that experience that makes clients come back. And the other thing about it is the luxury client, the high end client is the client that is looking specifically for this. They are not looking for a commodity. They are not looking for a product. Those they expect within the process. They expect them to be high quality. They expect the process to be good. They're looking for an up-level experience. If you remember, Chris Ramey said, the luxury clientele, you don't sell to them, you fascinate. And so today I have Ashley Ull with me and Ashley is a specialist in this. And I love Ashley's background. Ashley not only has a background in client relations, sales, and communications at top leadership development company, Dale Carnegie. I mean, right there you have me at hello, right? She also has several years working with and understanding expectations of high net worth clients at wealth management firm, Morgan Stanley. In addition to this, Ashley also pursued her certificate in interior design. And it's so funny because when I spoke to her, she sa- I said, did you actually get their certificate? She says, Luann, I did everything but one project. And she thought she needed to justify that to me. No way. I know that this lady is an on top of it type of lady. I've had many conversations with her. I absolutely love what she does and I'm really sure that you are going to love it too. So here we go. Let me introduce you to Ashley Uhl. Hi Ashley. Welcome to A Well-Designed Business. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I am so happy to have you, Ashley, because I know I, I what it is is I get excited about things that I know work because I've experienced them. So it's so funny on the show, right? Because sometimes I'm super excited because I'm like, I know nothing about this. This is going to be amazing. <laughs> but there's other times that I know what you're doing works and I know why it works. And of course, I'm always looking for better ways to do what I'm already doing, what we're doing as a team.
team at Window Works because somebody like yourself will, I'm sure, give me an aha moment. So one of the things, Ashley, that I just loved about the way you consult and you teach interior designers is that you have it into a quantifiable process. Like you have your three E's of high-end service experience. And I would love it if you would run us through your three E's today because I think they're just so valuable in helping us understand exactly what you're teaching. Yes, absolutely. So first, yes, I love to kind of nail things down into numbers, things that are very clear and simple. That really is, you know, part of the client experience on its own, just making sure things are super simple and very understandable to anyone. And I do talk about that kind of in my consultations as well. So what the three E's is, is it's kind of like the Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? It's like you can only, you have to have the basics done. You have to be fed and all of these things become, before you can become self-aware at the top. It's the same idea. So the foundation of a customer experience really is, the first E is fulfill the essentials. So you really want to be able to take care of these very, very basic things before you can ever move on to this second and third E. So some of those essentials are very things like arrive on time every time. Mm. It sounds so very simple. And a lot of the things are kind of like, duh. But the thing is, is there's a difference between knowing it and doing it, <laughs> right? Yes. And yes. <laughs> so we know that we should arrive on time, but a lot of times we don't. And it really does. It's just that first thing that starts to create a question in a client's mind. Like, oh, you know, we were supposed to have this initial consultation at 10, but it's 10.06. It seems like, oh, it's only six minutes. And every once in a while, there are things that you just cannot do anything about, right? There was an accident right before you. You can't do anything about it, but you need to be prepared and have a customer's phone number before you get there, right? So you can create that, I'm sorry, I'm letting you know, I'm notifying you, there's been an accident, I'm trying to find you know, the fastest route to you possible. Those are things that are just gonna have to happen, but you have to be prepared, right? Have that customer's phone number ready. But if there's things that you're just not great at time management, we're well, gonna have to get better, unfortunately, at time management, because it is those small things to start like creating questions in a customer's mind. If they can't get here on time for our very first meeting, our very first impression, <laughs> What else are they going to not be on time for? What about, you know, the project? Is everything going to be delayed? So it is small things like that. Um, Or bringing simple things like a pen and copies. There (laughs) have been many professionals I've had in our house where they're like, oh, I don't have a pen. Can you get me a pen? And it's just (laughs) when you're not prepared. It's funny, right? It's just funny. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so you think, oh, it isn't a big deal. Right. It isn't a big deal for me to go and get a pin, of course, but it is just you want to be showing this client who could be giving you hundreds of thousands of dollars. I am prepared. I'm on top of this. I know what I'm doing. You don't want to create, especially at the beginning, any sort of question in that other person's mind that they're not capable of managing this project. You want to show that you have every single thing in line that you've planned out this sort of magical experience that they get to now take part in and you're showing them with every single thing that you do I'm ready to take this big project on well and the thing is too you know I hear you in saying it sounds like it's easy it sounds like duh everybody knows that but you're so right Ashley a lot of people business owners do overlook this and think it's not a big deal and I think is It's not that when you arrive 20 minutes late without a phone call that the client automatically has the sentence in their head. 
oh, oh, this designer is late and is my whole project going to run late? I don't think that it's such a conscious thought, but it's more to your point. They're just little indicators that are working on the client subconsciously. And if there's more than a few before they even get to contract, then it might cause them to think twice before signing. And on the other side, even if they ignore one or two little things and get to contract, don't you find that once there, there's go, there's always going to be a problem. Look, it's interior design. There's going to be a problem. The tile yeah, guy is going to make a mistake. The drapery yeah. person is going to make a mistake. Like, you know, the drapery person is going to come late. Like something's going to happen, right? But if yeah. you have done everything absolutely with impeccable service, when some of those things happen down the road, at least you, I feel like you can say, look, I, I, I have done everything. This is a snag. I apologize, but I think you can see that so far all of the details have been attended to. And I ask your indulgence in letting me resolve this problem for you as quickly as possible and know that that's what I'm here for. You see, as opposed to, well, you were late and this has happened and then you didn't have a pen and and now your contractor's late. Well, of course your whole ship is a mess, right? Right. Right. <laughs> right. Absolutely. And like you said, a lot of it is subconscious. Right? right. And it's like we people, anybody is going to give a pass to a business. Right. But once you've ticked off too many things, then it's like, mm, OK, maybe I should start questioning this. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, OK, you were 15 minutes late. OK, but everything else went just fine okay now we've forgotten about that maybe that was just something that happened right Mm -hmm. but yes like you said subconscious you take off these little things and if too many things happen then yes they really do start to question but if on the flip side like you said if you've done so many things well you've really earned almost you've earned the right to a mistake yeah you can shine in how you handle the mistake just as well as you have shined the entire way through there's a mistake like you you've earned that but now you're also able to shine in how well you take care of that mistake and boom you're back in their good graces just with how well you handled and took care of that exactly exactly i love it okay so so and the thing is we kind of blew by this maslow's hierarchy thing and many business owners are familiar with it and and to some, it might be new information. It is something that you can Google. It is also, I think it's on your website as well. Am I making that up? Am I imagining that? It's not. No. Okay. So, okay. So, but it is something you can Google. And what it is, is Ashley very cleverly is taking this well-known pyramid where at the bottom are our base needs as human beings, which is food, water, uh, air, sleep, like our absolute basic needs as human beings to be alive, okay? <laughs> that what they're saying is in the Maslow hierarchy is at the very top is creativity and flourishment and, and, and contentment and joy, but you can't even expect a human being to even remotely attempt to experience creativity or joy or contentment if you have missed food or sleep or water. You can't give somebody food right. and water and deprive them of sleep, give them everything in between on the pyramid and say, hey, and get to contentment. It's like sort of not going to happen. Right. And so, <laughs> right? So I love that you exactly. have, and I think the reason I took a minute to describe that is because I think it makes your presentation more powerful in the sense that if someone is listening and they take a minute to Google this this pyramid, this hierarchy, that you will then see with a little bit more clarity, what Ashley's point is, is that at the the customer journey, the client journey of this amazing experience is she's relating it to the human journey. And she's saying at the very foundation, like food, water, sleep is this awareness of all of these details, these entry point details have to be met before you can even think to move on to layering in the good stuff. So arrive on time, be professional in your appearance, have all of your samples available, make the phone call if you're going to be late. I mean, I, I, look, we're not saying that saying we're never late, right? But there's a difference. I can tell you for, for, uh, for me, especially if, God forbid, I'm going to be an hour, hour and a half late because I'm coming back from Manhattan and something happened, I will use the phrase, 
the in, you know hello and I apologize and this is what's happening and I'll always put in there and since it I'm really going to be very late I didn't know if maybe you needed to run to the grocery store or get an errand done and which you could accomplish in this time that it's taking yes. me to get to you and you know just putting that seed in sort of Absolutely. flips them from I'm waiting for you to oh I can get something done while I'm waiting for you yes That's ma'am brilliant. I'm running off to that mall and getting that kids their soccer sneakers or something <laughs> right <laughs> yes so okay so i just thought it was important because i think it's so clever the way you relate it to the foundation of the essential things that as a professional you have to meet before you can even because we're not wowing people at this point that's really the point we're right. providing them with the very basics of service okay right. all right take us yeah. through uh, continue us through ashley okay so the next one is to make it easy so you want to make it as easy as possible to work with you and but this is going to be different really for every designer because this is where now you start to understand who your clients are and what easy looks like to them so um, when I worked at Morgan Stanley our clients were usually 70 to 80 years old right so What's easy for them is very different than what's easy for a 30-year-old client. Mm. And so what we would do is, you know, Morgan Stanley was really encouraging everybody to have an online account. So they wouldn't call us in for something like their balance in their checking account. And But for our clients, that wasn't easy for them. Right. I would spend a lot of time trying to show them, okay, this is how we set up your account. This is how you walk through it. <laughs> And, you know, that was what was easy to them. Sure, it took some time and, you know, and in the end, sometimes we would just say, this isn't easy for you. Just call us for your balance. <laughs> it's okay, right? But we had to understand that was what was making it easy for them. Our clients were 80-year-olds and the computer wasn't easy. Some of them didn't even have a computer, right? right? So we had to understand what made things difficult and what made things easy and adapt to that. Or like we would send when we would um, send out paperwork that need to be signed, right? You have to make it abundantly clear. This is where you sign. Here is your pre-stamped, pre-addressed envelope. Yeah. There's literally nothing else we can do right. for you, right? right? So you just understand what is it about working with us that makes it a challenge for this client? Okay, now we're going to have to flip this and try to do whatever we can to make that as easy as possible. Make your website easy to navigate. Make your paperwork very clear and understandable. Your contracts, your processes, everything needs to be easy and understandable for what your client, who your client is and what their lifestyle is like. Okay. And so th we often talk on the show about us setting up our processes and clients needing to follow our processes. And Absolutely. I believe that. And I know that's to be true. We have to teach people how to do business with us. That's so, that's oh, yes. important. But there, there's this is where I, you know, I just spoke at the IWCE and I did several sales training courses last week. And the reality is, is I kept, I must have said, if I said it once, I said it 20 times. There's never an always and there's always always there's always going to be a never right like it's just yeah. like you you know you you have an ideal but there is some wiggle room and some nuance where you have to me mix the skill with the science so the science of it is is that we have our process and our client goes into our system and follows our process but Absolutely. there is a, a skill into being able to have some level of flexibility when it provides extra value in the experience for the client. And so talk a little bit about some of the things in your experience working with interior designers, Ashley, that might fit that little gray area. So maybe it's we don't do any texting here, but a client is, insists on texting. I can understand. I don't want purchase orders and I don't want f decisions made by texting. How do you do that? How, give us some tips on the nuance on what's a non-negotiable and what we can do to enhance their experience and make it easy for them. Sure. So yes, I would say, first of all, you want to figure out what your non-negotiables are, right? If your non-negotiable is no texting, then I say you stick with that, right? Because texting can really 
drive you mad. Right. And so if, if a client is saying that I only text, you can just, I think it's absolutely fine to let them know, I'm sorry, you know, um, we have found, and what you want to explain is why it benefits them. So you always want to talk from the client's perspective, right? Right. Um, unfortunately, we don't text. We found that when we try to text clients, it becomes really burdensome of our time and the client's budget. And it's really hard to also track what the decisions are made. And we want to make sure that none of these things slip through the cracks. So we always communicate by phone or email. So that's how you want to, first of all, kind of, you know, work with your non-negotiables. You just explain it in the client's perspective, how it benefits them. What I love in there is that you started by explaining how you come back to the client and say, we have found. And my line is always that I say, in our experience or in my experience, that's what I always say, because I think it does. It it says to the client that there is a thought behind this. I'm not just arbitrarily putting this condition or this process on us. It's in my experience and we have found la la la. So I love that, Ashley. Yes, absolutely. And like you said, then like, you know, it's not just coming out of nowhere and you have done your research, you've gone through the experience and yeah, you found that this is the best outcome for what your situation is. Right. And, and so when we talk about just to, you know, recap that little scenario there, it's when we talk about making it easy for them to do business with us, it isn't just they get to decide what's easy. That's really what you're describing here, right? Right, right. They're not the boss. You are the boss. You know what makes sense, right? They shouldn't be telling you what your process is. They have no idea, and that's the way they hired you. It's about making it easy for them to understand your design process and come into your design process. Mm -hmm. So just letting them know in clear and simple terms, this is how we work. This is our, you know, these are our phases. This is how, you know, our deadlines on this phase and this phase. These are the things you expect can expect. It's just about making that easy and understandable for them to see themselves in really. Right, right. See, that's a very great distinction there. We're not talking about running amok, making it easy for them because we we bend into a pretzel. It's making it easy for them to understand and to be in our process. I love that. And I have to say, I think a, a good example of that is the conversation about the investment range. Because I find, Ashley, you tell me what you find, but I find that designers struggle with when a client will say, well, what's the budget going to be for this? Or the designer will say, what's your budget? And the client will say, well, I don't know. I don't have one. And I get a lot of designers saying to me, what am I supposed to say to that? How are they, how can they not have a budget? And the thing is, you know, I put it back on their head and I say, you know, how is it that you don't feel like it's your responsibility to at least be able to frame a conversation that expresses the possibility of budget reigns. I, I, to me, it's like if I went into a car dealership and I said to the guy, I want a car. And he said, what's your budget? And I said, I don't know. Like, should he show me everything from the 10-year-old used car in the back of the lot all the way to the Maserati sitting at the front of the the showroom? Like, should he really do that? And is that a productive use of mine or his time? Right? And so isn't that sort of the same thing is when a, a designer mistakes that it's not their responsibility for being able to frame that conversation? And And to me, I bring this up in this part because... I think that's a part where, as a profession, we don't make it easy for the client. Sure. Yes, absolutely. And with, like, a car, people, of course, have an idea that, right, like, a Honda Civic costs maybe $20,000, um, a Mercedes is, like, 50000 or above. We already know, just as people walking around, we already know what that stuff costs right so walking into that at least a client's going to have some idea i think a client especially if they've never worked with a designer has no clue that's my what point. that's not cost. fair right yeah. <laughs> right and they really don't know and so absolutely part of the designer's responsibility is to make it understandable 
what is it really is they can expect for their budget you know and i know a lot of designers who do this sort of good better best kind of comparison of okay if you want a chair that's this level a good is pottery barn and it's going to cost this and with some customization the better it's this right and you keep showing them and so it's like okay now the client can grasp onto something but before that a client may say I don't know, five thousand dollars, and the designer is like, "What? Right? You know, that's <laughs> ridiculous." But they could spend forty, but they just don't know. They've been shopping retail, so they don't know what it's reasonable to expect for customization and designer being involved. Yeah, so really, it is making it easy for the client to understand what the budget is, the expectations of the entire process of working with the designer. Right, right. Because I often will have the butt back at me. It'll be, and I'll say, well, it is your job to provide some comparison, something to evaluate by, just as you described, because we have innate abilities to do lots of products that we've had previous contact with, but as going into the interior design market, often we have no previous experience, so nothing to base on. And I'll often get, when I say to that effect, I'll often get, well, how am I supposed to know how many hours it's going to take to do a project? I don't really know them. Or how am I supposed to know if they're going to be easy to work with or hard to work with? How am I supposed to know if they're going to hire my trades or not? And I just, you tell me, but I'm like, okay, so take all that off the table. How about we just talk the project, like the pro- the products? Like, you know, some people don't even know that it's going to be $30,000 for a minimum level products for a living room. I mean, that's a minimum right. level for products of a living room. Some living rooms, it could be 100000 for product. And then, and I think that's okay to say, look, if we're just talking product here, just to give you ballpark, this living room product is thirty grand. This living room product is fifty grand, And of course, yeah. design fees are on top of all of that, which could run anywhere from to from, right? Right. Absolutely. You know, and designers can show their portfolio. And like you said, you can say, you know, for this room, that's beautiful, right? And it costs this much. And right, you know, the designer fees are on top of this just so they can see, okay, if I want this level of beauty, Mm -hmm. this is what I can expect. Yeah, you really do have to kind of explain to them. And this is one other way that you can show that you are the lead, right? Mm -hmm. They're coming to you Mm -hmm. to get all of this advice and for you to lead and manage that project. And you don't want once you start, you know, letting the client get too involved in like pricing and budgeting and all of that stuff, then you can start to lose control. Right. But when you are leading the process and the project by letting them know, you know, this is what you can expect for this kind of customization and explaining them what, you know, is going to be happening, then they're seeing you as this person is here to manage, they're here to lead, they have experience, Mm -hmm. they know how to answer my questions. The client does want you to lead them. Even if they're showing like, oh, you know, maybe I'm going to take over control. They just may see, oh, maybe she's allowing this. Maybe she wants me to take over some control. And they really don't. Clients want you to lead because you know how to. Right, exactly. And they feel safer when they know you're in control. And they oh, feel and that doesn't mean that you take away their choice. It means that you professionally give them their choices. I always yeah. use the, the example of the high end steakhouse, right? So you could have two different clients looking exactly the same way come into a steakhouse, dressed in the exact same, you know, dress or suit, whatever. Everything on the outward appearance is giving you indicators of quote unquote where they fall on the totem pole of life right yeah. but one person could be very very particular about wine and really be a connoisseur and on a regular basis spend three four hundred dollars for a bottle of wine and the other person with the exact same net income exact same lifestyle really is like you know whatever stuff that's red will work for me right but <laughs> right. if you if they if each individual sits down at the mater d or i mean at the wine someday and says you know, I, I love a light red wine, nothing crazy. I'm going to have steak tonight at, or my wife's going to have pasta or my, you know, whatever. What do you recommend? If they're just like, well, I have no idea. You're just like, <laughs> what, do you, what is this place? <laughs> right? Like right. what happened here? And yeah. I thought you were in charge. <laughs> right. 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 Yes. Yes. You expect an educated 
you know, and professional answer when you ask someone a question. They're in the power of control and, and really that knowledge and experience you expect to be shared with you. And they are, like you said, they feel comfortable and they feel secure in your answers because they are coming to you for guidance. So, you know, it's it's not about being controlling. It's about being in control. Right. I love it. I love it. I think it's awesome. So we love when the professionals, no matter who they are and what we do with them, we have the confidence that they are aware of all of the steps and they're guiding us from one to another. We don't want to be the one who's thinking about the next step or the details or the things that are left out because that makes us feel like we're on shaky ground. It's oh, like, I'm yes. not in charge. I don't know. I came to you. <laughs> right. 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 And there are businesses I have dealt with that I feel like I am the one pushing every next step. And I think, why did I hire you? Right. You know, right. you start know what... to question the value. The experience exactly. is not good. Okay. I love that. So is there anything else in easy or are we moving to a next step here? Well, I mean, I could go on all day with <laughs> make it true. easy, but <laughs> just, you know, some of the, um, like I said, you know, making your website easy to navigate, make it extremely possible to hire you. You don't want to take long times between like, oh, here's your contract. We had the initial meeting and then like two weeks later you get the contract. You want to make it right super fast. Okay, we've got this project scope. Now we have a contract. Here's the retainer. Make everything as easy as possible. If you're going to do not e-sign, but you're going to just send out a paper contract, do those pre-addressed, pre-stamped envelopes, just do everything possible to make it as easy to hire you, first of all, right? You don't want to put a bunch of hoops before somebody can even hire you. Right, right. Yeah. So, yes, then if you want, we can go on to the make it enjoyable. Okay, let's do that. All right. So, yes, that's the last one is make it enjoyable by spicing it up with a little bit of luxury and pampering but like we said you don't want to do this until you have fulfilled the essentials and you have made it easy because this this luxury it has a really value that is very very variable and the way that the other two don't so if you aren't fulfilling the essentials and making it easy, luxury can start to have a negative value where it really starts to work against you because people are irritated that you are, oh, I get lots of gifts and we go to great parties, but she can't call me back, mm, right? And right. so it becomes an irritation and a frustration and it's like she doesn't get what's really going on here and why I am feeling so frustrated with this project. So this is something that has to be dealt with carefully. But if you are dealing with the fulfilling the essentials and making it easy and you're killing those two, this is really, really can take you straight to the top. You can charge high prices and you have huge value now. Um, one example is when back when I was um, a college kid and I would come home for the summer one of my um, projects that my dad would ask me to do is, can you take my car in to get it fixed? So it was a Mercedes. And so you expect, right, a luxurious room to wait in. Mm. And it was. So they would have cookies and uh, popcorn, like freshly made popcorn and coffee and expensive um, sodas, all of these things. Everyone had a little work cubby with all of these outlets. Great. <laughs> But it was awful. I dreaded going every time. They would tell me it would take an hour, and then it would be three hours. They would mm. never update me. It was just – I would have to go ask them after an hour, and then two hours, and then three hours. They were never coming to find me. I couldn't stand it, right? So it was like you walk in, and you think, oh, this is going to be luxurious. Now I get all this free um, food and goodies and whatever. Okay, at the by the end, I hate those cookies. <laughs> Because... Take your cookies and sl <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> right? Because they hadn't taken care of the very basic things, like making sure they give me the right expectations on how long this is going to take. And like you brilliantly said, Luann, they could have told me this is going to be late. 
So why don't you take this opportunity to go and do something? Because they were on a very um, busy street. I could have walked to get lunch. Right. But instead, I'm sitting there waiting because you're not updating me. You're giving me inaccurate estimates. And so, okay, now you're doing a very terrible job of all of these basic things. So, yeah, I don't care about your cookies and your work cubbies. These things are stupid <laughs> now. <laughs> She sounds all sweet, but she doesn't care about your cookies or your work cubbies. <laughs> That's right. awesome. <laughs> but you're so right. You know, we all know what it is is you're describing that aggravation factor yeah. that comes from something that is, quote, unquote, supposed to be a delightful factor. And, you know, again, you can relate it to, like, your human being life. This is if you're in a relationship and this person lets you down all the time. You know, oh. every week you have a date and the person is always late or every week they're supposed to pick your mother up at 2 o'clock and they always try and get out of it. But then like the next day, every week, they always walk in with flowers and you're like, stop it with the flowers, buddy. Exactly. You, you, you let me down here every week. But at the same time, if you're in a relationship and everything is really you know, look, it's never always perfect, right? But it's a really nice relationship. It's very um, supportive and this and that. And you get the surprise every couple of weeks of a, a lunch at work or flowers at work or, you know, what, or I'm going to take your mother myself this weekend to, to, you know, to get her, you know, orthopedic shoes. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, then that's an extra and that's you are just so over the top and I love it. Right. So that is right. And I have to give a, a boost and a shout out to my husband. That is him. Yes. He is. He fulfills all the basics and he gives me those surprises. But yes, if he had just given me surprises, what, but was a terrible boyfriend and then husband, all of those things mean nothing. And right. it just, yeah, it becomes like, I don't need your flowers. I need you to show up for right. me, right. you know? Right. And this is the same thing for this business. It's you want them to do all of those other basic things, right? And then once you do that, okay, now we're pampering you and giving you luxury service. We're throwing parties for you, client appreciation events. We're sending you on stadium tours. All of those things then become, wow, you mm. truly are one of a kind. I will never work with anybody else. And, you know, really it, it creates incredible loyalty that will last a lifetime because mm -hmm. you have hit every nail on the head. But like you said, it doesn't mean that there haven't been any mistakes in interior design. There's so many moving pieces. There are going to be mistakes, but it's how you handle those mistakes that keep you moving on that clear path to success. It, it won't set you back. Now, if you have a million of them, sure, that's going to be a struggle. But if you minimize them and you handle them correctly, boom, you can deliver this luxury, make it enjoyable kind of service and you become unbeatable. So I, what I'm wondering is, Ashley, since you work with a lot of interior designers, we, we all have businesses that can afford these enjoyable luxuries at different levels, right? So yeah. <clears throat> what's an enjoyable, what's a one way to make an experience for a client enjoyable for a startup sort of firm is completely different. You just mentioned stadium tickets, a stadium yeah. tour. So I imagine at the high level of our industry, if somebody's got a six or a seven or an eight hundred thousand million dollar client, things like that are probably pretty commonplace to do a, a, a an experience or a gift that costs several hundred, if not thousands of dollars. But oh, yeah. can you give us some ideas of what are because I know there are ways to to make an impression, to create loyalty and to really convey your gratefulness to a client at every level. Do you have some ideas for us at the different yes. price points and break uh, brackets? Yes, absolutely. So if you're on a budget, it becomes more about things being personalized and some kind in some ways countering what life has become, right? Start doing things like handwritten thank you notes, right? After someone signs your contract, send them a handwritten thank you note. Mm. Everybody wants things to be fast and, you know, we're texting, we're always emailing and just taking the time to handwrite 
thank you for you know working with us we're so excited to move on with this and really make your dream a reality and you sign it and if you have an assistant she signs it as well just doing something small like that and again at the end when you're doing the project reveal you write another thank you note little things i mean that literally cost Nothing. I have to tell you, that's the thank you at the end of the project is not news to most of us, right? I mean, we, right. I mean, that should be standard protocol, in my opinion. But the yeah. thank you on the signing of the LOA, that's pretty powerful. Right. I love and it's that. Just something small. And if, you know, you want to spend a little bit more money, you could have that delivered with a small box of chocolates. Mm -hmm. And you could have even asked them before, like, oh, you know, just sometimes we like to surprise our clients. Do you prefer milk or dark chocolate? Mm -hmm. Make a note of it and mm -hmm. then send them a box of dark chocolate. It could easily cost, you know, maybe $15 to right. just have a throw a couple of dark chocolate truffles in there with your handwritten thank you note. And that will definitely wow somebody for a very small price. Right. I, I That is so true. I love that. I mean, with the little gift or not, because I don't think I would, I'd be curious now. I might start to intentionally ask designers how, what percentage, you know, to be interesting to learn what percentage are sending a handwritten thank you after the LOA. And you know what, the, you know, all of my designers listening are probably like, Leanne, we all do that. <laughs> like, I don't know. I've never, it's never come up in conversation. So <laughs> yeah. But I, I just, I had an actual reaction to that, Ashley. I had an actual reaction like, whoa, that's, yeah. that's, and, and so easy to do. So, it okay. Is. All right. Yes. So tell us any other little ideas along the way for um, any level firm. Yes. So, you know, when you are in the procurement and waiting process this can be a bit of a tough spot for people if it goes on longer than they're expecting right so I like to teach designers to put in client touch points with client frustration points right you oh. want to cover them um, and put them at that same point so you can take somebody out to a lunch and it doesn't have to be you know a hundred dollar lunch you can definitely go to a place that even between the two of you if you have drinks cost maybe forty dollars forty five dollars mm. especially for lunch you know and you want to be making relationships with restaurants have a few in mind and always call the restaurant first let them know you're bringing a business client you know is there way any way that they can make sure that you have a table waiting for you you know in, in a back spot maybe where you have some quiet time and then just kind of meet with that client and let them know how the project is going make sure that they don't have any concerns or frustrations and just talk them through that you're showing that again, that you are prepared, that you're planned, that you know what's happening and that you understand that this is a hard time for them. They're waiting, they're anxious and all the money, either all the money is out or 50% of the money is out and nothing's back. And so you just kind of want to really take the time. Time is a luxury, right? Especially mm -hmm. now. And so showing that client that you're willing to give them the luxury of your time is a huge thing. Now, That's powerful. Yeah, and but you don't want to charge. And I know that that can be tough, but you don't want to take the client out and then be like, surprise, you also have to pay for me, right? Because it's like, <laughs> No, this isn't luxury anymore. I, that. I mean, and we're not billing them for the hour either, by the way. <laughs> right, exactly. It's just something nice to do to continue that relationship and to make sure that they aren't feeling too frustrated. If they have any additional questions, you can address them all and just even ask them questions like, what could make this process easier for you? What could make this less stressful for you? I, this so is really amazing. Showing. I love this idea. I This is a slam dunk idea because you are so right, Ashley, about that middle process there. And it is hard on both sides because the design firm is running like like with the, the duck behind, under the water with the feet going a mile a minute, <laughs> trying to get everything ordered and timed and staged properly as far as something's going to take 20 weeks to come in and something's going to take three weeks to come in, right? It's a lot of work there. And in that phase, it's 
it's easy for us to always be looking inward, feeling that pressure there and forgetting that that phase is, is very difficult for the client for exactly the reason you said. Lots of money out of the checkbook, not a lot of things in, looking pretty in their face. And I, you know what happens is, is I love the idea because it's not, you're not setting up a meeting to work, right? You're not coming with, and I've got 15 things for you to make selections on. That's a work meeting. Right. We have that right. at work. This is a, hey, let's take a breath. Let's make sure everybody's happy. Let's give you a chance to speak to me where it doesn't feel like you're having to call me and confront me with something. Let's just have like, it's almost like let the air out of the balloon a little bit. And I also feel like it's, and let me remind you why you love me right? Yes. You're forgetting that right now. And yes. you need to see that happy part of me, that in charge right. part of me, the, that, that, yeah. that rock star that you hired is still here, right? Right. Yes. yes. And the other layer, Ashley, of developing a relationship with a restaurant, and even if this is the first time you're going to do it, to go in the day before, introduce yourself, yeah. tell them what's going to happen. Because even at a, at a simple you know, I call them ladies lunch luncheonettes, right? We know yes, what those yeah. are, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's not your pizza joint, but it's not this fancy restaurant. There's that place that all the ladies lunch in town. We're all my clients right. lunch, right? Yes. <laughs> and, and, and that level place is... It would be very nice for the, the even if it's a kid at the front door that sits you, that says, oh, hi, Sally Smith, interior designer. Oh, is this your client? You know, Patsy, whatever, right? It's, yeah. it's that little extra of, huh, she's, you know, she's got her stuff together. I love this idea, Ash. And so far, these are not break the bank ideas. That's what's so amazing. And these ideas are effective whether you are a $4 million firm or a $40,000 firm. I mean, these are just good business practices. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, you can also let that restaurant know I plan on bringing more and more of my clients here, right? I want this to be a continual thing. So they have a vested interest in making sure that you really have a quality experience because not only are you coming back over and over again, but you're also bringing possibly new clients that they've never been to this restaurant. You're introducing it and then they come back again on the road and maybe they start to bring friends, right? So right. they really do. If you kind of explain what your situation is, they can really, you know, have a vested interest. I would always work with local restaurants, so mm -hmm. rather than chain restaurants, right, 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 right. as they are going to have that vested interest in a way that, right, like the manager of an Applebee's maybe doesn't care as much. Right, 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 right. <laughs> and the truth, what's so funny about that is I'm on board with you on that whole statement, but there are like I, we have a, a Fridays that we go to here. It's so funny. There are two Fridays near my primary residence that I will never go to, but the Fridays by our vacation house is awesome. The manager has been there for 10 years. The bartender has been there for 10 years. It's cheers. So even though it's Fridays, uh, yeah. it's, yeah. you know, there are times when they see my face at the door and by the time I sit at the bar, they've got the two glasses and the wine cracked open. Wow. Wow. Out of Fridays. That is amazing. Yes. If you find a restaurant like that, even if it is a chain, oh, my God, right? that is definitely a place to be. And what's so funny is our yes. grown kids and our friends are like, you go to Fridays? I'm like, well, <laughs> I get and it's to your point. It's the experience. You know, yeah. It, it's it's yeah, the food is mediocre. But, you know, when I'm just looking for a burger on Saturday night after a movie, I, it, I get this elevated <laughs> experience out of Fridays. It's crazy. <laughs> yes. Yes. And like you said. The food isn't even what is making it. No. It is the experience. And, yeah, if you just give somebody time and a personalized experience, that really is worth so much. And it doesn't cost that much extra to just be like, here's your favorite drink. I had it ready, right? That's mm -hmm. what Starbucks, a huge chain, is capable of doing because every kind of location is empowered to really make that personalized experience for that location so yes if you have a restaurant even if it is a chain yeah go there absolutely because you want to be able to trust that they are going to deliver consistently mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love it and so together these three E's you know fulfilling the essentials making it easy making it enjoyable these are very clear 
steps that you can piece together in your own way that's personal to you as a professional, that's personal to you as a human being, that's personal to you as a design firm, that you, if you think about it for you, what does it mean? You can create a really spectacular client experience that does result in more profits and client retention, right, Ashley? Absolutely. Um, You know, it is kind of, it's a million tiny little things that add up to this incredible experience. You know, it doesn't have to be, like we said, those big luxurious things. It can be a million tiny little things that make you feel like, wow, that was incredible. I mean, I just took my two and a half year old to the dentist for the first time and believe it or not, going to the dentist, I was terrified to take him. I had no idea it was going to happen. And it was again this was a dentist an incredible experience going to the dentist (laughs) because he had done all of these things and i couldn't believe it we walked out of there and i was like what just happened that was just dentist oh my gosh because they hit every nail on the head they absolutely fulfilled the essentials they set the right expectations they let us you know know what we needed to be possibly concerned about they explained everything they knew what our limitations were and then all the way up to they entertained him they gave him like a lemon scented towel to wipe his face and his hands on they gave him like these balloons they gave him like cool sunglasses to um protect his they're trying to create a customer for life at that dentist office (laughs) and they have right i wrote a whole two whole blog posts just on to on this dentist so if a dentist can do it really anyone can do it and should do it because like you said I'm now a customer for life and I have told a million people about how incredible uh, this dentist is right, so right, right, right. it could be you as an interior designer right right no it's true and it's so funny because I've said the story before on the show when my youngest needed braces we went to the orthodontist in town and my best friend's daughter needed braces a minute and a half later, right? And so oh, she says, what did you think of the, the orthodontist, this and that? And I said, they were terrific. Same thing. No no balloons and no whistles and no lemon towels. But it was <laughs> well run, which I appreciated. Yeah. The t- point was on time and the staff was nice and explained to her everything that was happening with the braces. And so she said, you know, I think I'll call them. Well, about two weeks later, I got a tin of chocolate chip cookies in the mail. This is 20 years ago. And I was just like, who else can I refer to this dentist? (laughs) I mean, because like, because I can't go out and buy my own chocolate chip cookies, but getting them in the mail was just so much more of a treat, right? (laughs) Yes, absolutely. It is those things where you're like, oh, now I feel special, right? right? And you just want to kind of continue on with that. Yeah, it very really can good. Be a huge impact. Yes, and it is. It's little things like that, and we often look for the big splash wow factor. And to to that point, I do have one question about that. When we are dealing with a client that is maybe a half million or a million dollar client, and we've got that sort of a firm. It, it gets, I don't know, I, I would hate to have to have, I don't know, I feel like it's, you could potentially overthink that just as much as you could overthink it, what could I do that's special that I don't have a, but when I don't have a budget for gifting, because I, you almost could get yourself in a knot of, they have everything they could possibly want, what can I do for them that expresses the level of the investment they've made with me, but also is it just a redundant luxury or something in their life do you just go for, i mean i can see that these thank you notes and these little lunches are a home run at every level but is there something else that happens at that super luxury level ashley that we should think about yes so when you get to that highest level you want to focus on experiences because like you said they have a lot of money and they probably have a lot of stuff Mm -hmm. and they can do whatever they want with that so you want to give them unique experiences so that is when you start like right getting box office tickets getting stadium tours can they meet people like certain baseball players that are famous in your town can you hire like um, a local chef that's very famous to have a class Mm. or like you were talking about a sommelier to have a wine tasting class this is when you start to focus on experiences rather than gifts 
Okay. I can, you know, it's funny because um, I can see that, especially if part of your design was a beautiful kitchen. And now, and it doesn't even have to be a celebrity chef, just the chef in a great restaurant and the one that yeah. you've made, maybe the one that you have the relationship with. And Absolutely. this isn't, I'm here with you with this local chef. This is my present to you and three of your girlfriends are having girls night and the chef is going to cook for you or for you and two other couples, you're going to have a, a wine pairing dinner that I'm treating you to in your own home. Right. Absolutely. Yes. Love it. Yeah, and even if you are on a lower budget where you can't, you know, have them like in the home, you could do it, you know, at their location. Almost every major city has sort of cooking classes, mm. and you could just buy up that whole class and put different people in there, or like you said, you know, have them, you can bring two friends, all of this, you know, these different ways at different budget levels. But yeah, if you are at this, you know, top notch level, absolutely have them come into your home and the, they are treating you to an experience in your newly designed gorgeous kitchen and really show you, look how well I can use this amazing kitchen mm-hmm. that you just had designed. And you just gave me another idea there when you said if you buy up all the tickets in a cooking class and mix other people in. You know, Sandra Funk from House of Funk, she often has the gratitude is attitude, the attitude is gratitude party. And she invites all of her clients. There's 60, 70, 80 people in this room. And so that just reminded me of that. It doesn't have to be a special special personal experience if it's a million dollar client then maybe you do that like we said but you also could if you had 10 clients this year you could say this is my client appreciation gift and I'd like to invite you to this special wine tasting or the special thing with my other clients and there's 10 of you in a room or 12 and what better than 10 people who are all saying how amazing you are right right (laughs) absolutely right so you can mix them up and it's still a special gift for them and it's more affordable for you you because you're probably getting a discount on the multiple tickets and you're making everybody happy and yada 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 absolutely right and then you can just continue to develop that relationship with that place and you know that they're going to give you a great experience every time and you know I would but always test things out yourself if you're going to do that go to that class first Mm. experience it yourself see if that business is really great at handling it and if they are then yeah let them know this is what i plan on doing and and you kind of move on from there that's a great idea i probably would have skipped that step i would have been like (laughs) okay let's then i would have been there that night i'd be like this is bogus (laughs) (laughs) yes always test things out (laughs) that's smart ash i like that (laughs) so before i let you go tell us a little bit about the ways that designers can work with you in in your consulting firm? Yes. So what I do with the designers is I help them develop a plan. So they will go onto my site and they fill out a questionnaire and I can find out. It really just takes 20 minutes and they let me know kind of what their goals are, their challenges, when their customers are getting frustrated, when they are getting frustrated. And then I create a plan based on all of that, letting them know, okay, these are the things that are happening. These are the things that you need to start putting in place, the steps. And it works around your entire design process. So you have a very clear idea on when you need to be doing certain things. Okay, this is a great opportunity here for a customer touch point. This is a great opportunity here to do this for um, your client. If they're having issues with the project, this is how you should close the project. So it's a step-by-step plan, letting you know exactly how that design process should go. So I really teach systems and processes with a touch of luxury. I love it. I absolutely love it. And how do they reach you, Ashley? And what what does that look like? So um, I am on AshleyUllConsulting.com and Ull is U-H-L. And right now, um, if they go on and purchase something, if they use the promo code WELLDESIGNED, they get 20% off, wow. or they can also um, download their The Essentials of a High-End Designer Experience. So that download is a free download, is that right? That's right. Yeah, that's oh. a free download. Okay. And then, so when you do your work with interior designers, this yeah. questionnaire they fill out, this yes. questionnaire, 
I know from talking with you that this questionnaire is it's almost like one of those personality tests, Briggs Myers, where we're answering questions <laughs> that we think are just normal questions. But you have, b- based on your experience and your business background and Dale Carnegie background and so forth, you are asking questions that seem normal to us, but they are, the, by based on our responses, going to give you a picture that's at a deeper level and a more uh, focused level of helping you identify where we're dropping the ball in this experience. Am I correct? That's right. Yes. So when they answer these questions, it really gives me the opportunity to create what's called the customer journey. And so you map the customer journey from the very beginning to the very end. And so it allows me to see, okay, this is possibly, you know, a customer is going to get irritated here because there hasn't been enough information shared or it's been too long or, you know, they just don't understand what's coming next. And so it allows me to map that whole customer journey out, see where those possible irritation points are and then let you know okay this needs to be put in place this is how you know this is a system you need to put in place you need to develop this process and then and then I can also work with you um, coaching and helping you to really implement that if you need help developing documents and all of that stuff to make sure these are very consistent and systematic processes I do that as well okay and then the the process of working with you is it's detailed. In other words, when yes. you when they get back after you make your evaluation, we're not talking about a 10 minute phone call here. Give, give us some right. description on what this detail <laughs> is looking like. <laughs> yes. Well, like you said, it is very, very detailed. So it is a 20 plus page document. <laughs> You <laughs> say you weren't saying that part. I have to tell them that part. <laughs> You're right. Because to me, it's normal. But <laughs> it's not normal. <laughs> <laughs> My husband always says, like, Ashley, you really, really give a lot of detail, and you need to help people understand why, right? Yes. But these details are important because so I tell you what to do but I also tell you why you need to do it because it may seem a little bit like oh you know this is a lot of work and it is a lot of work at the beginning right so I'm going to give you 20 plus pages of all of these things that you can do but a lot of them are just develop this once and then use it over and over and over again and then just reap the benefits and see all that happens from it. Right. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I had to make sure that I explained that because that (laughs) is that I mean, that's that's you know what that is. That is above and beyond. And that is giving value. And hello, am I surprised? Because that's what your whole thing is, is teaching each of us how to bring value and to add that client experience. And so it doesn't surprise me one bit that the client experience, you know, being one of your clients is an elevated experience. So, yes, yeah. Well, thank you. I have to walk the walk and talk the talk, or I can't tell you to do it and then I don't do it <laughs> myself. So, yes, I hold myself to a high standard of client experience. That's absolutely. It. That's it. I love it. And um, what you call it, our friend Barclay Stone has worked with you, right? That's right. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. So big shout out and hello to Barclay. That's right. Yes. And I, there's many others, but I happen to know Barclay personally. So Ashley, you have done a remarkable job. I absolutely love everything that you do. I am so delighted to know that in a uh, a very few, two weeks, I'm going to meet you at Luann Nigara Live. It's about the conversation yes. because you are one of our sponsors at this event. So if right. you have already signed up for Luann Nigara Live, you know, whoa, you're going to get to meet Ashley in person and be able to speak with her over the weekend and pick her brain some more on some of the ways that you can elevate your client experience so that you can attract and create loyalty and luxury clients and that you you can make the experience better and so that you know the end goal of all of this is to be more profitable because Absolutely. the more we get our clients to focus on the value that we bring the less they focus on the price point for the individual product oh, and yeah. commodity item right that's exactly oh, what our goal is exactly yeah. so um, if you have not heard about Luann Igara live it's about the conversation um, then you have to go over to luannlive.com right Ashley they have to they have to be with us that weekend right absolutely it is a not to be missed career changing event and i cannot wait i know me too well thank you thank you
thank you. I look forward to meeting you in real life. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm so excited. All right, guys. So you, I mean, listen, are, is this actionable things that you can do now? You probably were writing furiously pen and paper. I have two and a half pages of notes. I know there's things here that I'm going to take away both to the window works business as well as the podcast business. And you heard me in the show that thank you letter after the LOL. I'd be very curious how many of you are doing that as a practice. And so you know that on the day that this show is live today, that we're featuring this show on Instagram. And I would love it if in the comments for this show, you would just say, yes, I'm doing a thank you letter at the LOA signing after the LOA signing or heck no, but that's an awesome (laughs) idea. So I want to know about that. I think it's awesome. And please do uh, look into it. So on Instagram, it's Luann Nigara. Please follow me there. Um, I just want to say before I go that keep in mind that High Point Market is coming up the week after Luann Nigara Live. It's the conversation. And that our friends Kravit are having a party on April 7th from 4 to 6 p.m. Please make sure you stop by. You say hello. You tell them I sent you. Okay. And also uh, what's happening is Jan Showers is is introducing her brand new furniture line at High Point Market with Kravitz. So please stop by and see that. Don't forget, we also have the curated Kravitz.com uh, booth at High Point Marketplace where you can see the quality of the curated Kravitz.com accessories, uh, lamps, rugs, furniture, all in person so that you have a little bit more knowledge and comfort when you want to order uh, on curated Kravitz.com. Okay. And then finally, Kravit is also introducing their latest partnership with Inside Out Fabrics. Inside Out Fabrics are made to weather the storm with fluorine free. Is that a word? Fluorine free. <laughs> I don't know. I have to check that out. But fluorine free technology, it's an environmental conscious choice. Okay. So lots of good and new things coming from our friends at Kravit Inc., which also will be at Luann Nigara Live. It's about the conversation. So thank you. Thank you for joining me today, everyone. I hope that you will take something from Ashley's tips and make an adjustment in your business so that you. You can always grow and make your business better each day, better for you, better for your client. But you know what it starts with? It starts with a decision. You have to take it from the notebook into the real life, into the doing part, okay? So you have to decide to be excellent. Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.